Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we're talking about creating interesting color chase effects or color gradients using the free lighting program Campsys Magic Q. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So if your church happens to have something like what I have behind me, these are some DIY um, color strip, um, pixel strips, uh, then this is going to be really interesting for you. Or even if you don't, even if you want something static and it's maybe just eight lights that are going across the back of your stage or across a wall, this is a really great way to get some interesting colors going on that's more than just blue or white or green or whatever it's going to be, um, they'll actually transform from one color to another. So let's hop right in. I'm going to try to make this video as quick as possible. Uh, I am using a new camera today, so hopefully you can really see the detail that I'm doing in here. I am very close in the room in here, so um, I hope this works out well for you. We're, we're going we're gonna to go through it together. Um, to keep things easy, I'm going to start, you can see on my screen here, with uh, group seven, uh, which is this light right behind me. Um, and um, let's say that we wanted to have something that was blue on the outside and then green on either the inside or the other side. Um, so you can see blue looks good, green looks good, but they're both kind of boring. They're, they're not something that this, you know, there's something that a, a cheap pixel strip could do, but I wanted something more interesting because this is basically 40 lights in a row right behind me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, while I'm in the color window, uh, version one of this is to go to the color picker and then I'm going to turn on fan. That's what's going to allow this to work. Uh, this is actually two different colors here, but they both happen to be blue. So if I click on the second half of this, uh, I can now use these faders and throw in green and you can see we've got blue on one side and then green on the other. Uh, now, if I want that to be to where green is in the middle, then I can change the type from linear to symmetrical. And now we've got blue on the outsides and then green on the inside. Um, now, the reason why the color picker is pretty cool, um, at least for this first example, is that we do have these toggle windows on here. So let's say I want to make a, uh, like a sunrise look. So I'm going to take my first color, make it red. And then my second color, I'm going to make it green. So red, I'm sorry, yellow. So we've got red on the outside, green on the inside. Now I can, in this window, I can grab on this wheel here and kind of move things around. Or I can grab this fader and make this more of an amber on the inside if I want that yellow to be a little bit less intense. Uh, I can also take the actual intensity and grab that, which is kind of neat. And so there's a few different things you can do in this color picker window that are interesting. Now, this is just the first version I want to show you. The, the bad thing about using this is that everything I've just done is just on this one strip right now. So if I were to save this, I hit record and call this sunrise. Let's clear out. If I were to turn all my lights on and hit sunrise, you can see it's only going to do it on that one strip because that's all that I've programmed in. Now I can go through to each one of these and program them in individually, um, but that might take a little while. So we're going to move on to uh, the second version of this, and we are going to um, use an effect. So let's uh, select our seven again here. We're going to do intensity at full. Now it's very important. Um, I usually like to use locate when I'm making palettes because it sets everything to default. You're going to see later on, it's very important that you do intensity at full and not locate when you're going to do the thing I'm about to do here. Um, so let's do add effect, color, and then two color mode. Now I'm going to do that blue and green again. So I'm going to do blue and then green. And you can see we have a chase effect. Hopefully this is showing up on the camera where it's primarily a blue strip and then there's green just kind of chasing across um, from left to right. So um, let's say we just want this to be behind our pastor. We don't necessarily want a chase happening. Either I can slow it down a lot, or in this case, I'm going to stop it. 
And to stop it, I'm going to go to speed type and change that from run to stop. Now, where it stopped, the green is off center. So I'm going to go to reorder effects. And I can just hit cancel again. And now we've got blue on the outside, it's green on the inside. Now, the downside to using the effect window is that we can't necessarily simply change that green. Um, I would have to go through, and everything's based off of palettes. So if I wanted that green to be like a darker green, I'd have to go in and save a darker green palette to work with. But apart from that limitation, you do have a lot of other options you can work with on here. Um, so one, we've got a crossfade. So if we want, you know, blue and green to be separated out, we can do that. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it at 100%. Um, we've got our spread. So at 100%, it looks like this with blue on the outside, green on the inside. 50%, we have that linear look, so blue to green. If we double, so 200, now we've got blue, green, blue, green, blue. And this looks really cool when you're doing some of your chase effects just to kind of play around with some of those different ones. Um, so you can change around with that and get some different things. We're going to stay at 100 for now. Uh, we've got width. Uh, so right now, blue and green are even. The, um, the width is really uh, indicating how big the second color is, so green. So if I want to emphasize blue, I can drop green down to, say, 33%. And now we've got, you know, if you break it into thirds, um, two thirds of this is blue and one third is green and then crossfade in between or 66%. And it's the opposite of that. And you can play around with the different numbers and kind of get that green bigger or smaller depending on what you want to do. So again, we're going to keep it at 50% for right now. So what we have right now is an effect. Um, when I go to save my different cues, I don't necessarily want to save this like this because it's going to be a little bit harder to get to. Sometimes effects engines get a little funky if you're crossfading from one to another. Um, so what I really want to do is I want to take this information and I want to save it as a color palette. And you can do that. Um, I saw this. Someone made a video of doing the same thing with mover positions. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this, um, this color scheme that we see right here and we're going to save it as a palette. Now to do that, um, you don't have to be in this window, but it, for visuals, it helps. We're gonna go to view levels. If you are starting from scratch, you could click on program, view levels. And you can see because we, when we first started this process, we did intensity at full and we didn't do locate. So we don't have any red, green, blue information here. What I can do though, is I can hold down shift, click active, and now it's taking the red, green, blue information that happens to be going on from the effect, and it's putting it into the programmer. Now that's in the programmer, I can save it as a palette. So if I go down here to record, I can call this Aqua and save it right here. Let's test it out. So I'm going to clear out. I'm going to turn on all my, my lights behind me and hit Aqua. And you can see, again, it's just doing that one strip. So here's where using effects becomes really interesting. If I want to get everything going, I can do that. So I'm going to hit clear again. In this case, I'm going to select all of my groups. And I'm going to do the same thing. So intensity at full, add effects, color, two color, blue, green. And now it's asking me, do I want to use the effects on groups? Yes. Now to do the same thing we were doing before, we're going to go to group spread and change this from groups to within group. And now what it's doing is it's doing that chase effect that we had earlier, but across every single one of these groups individually. So I'm going to stop this. So from run to stop. And you can see it reset itself to where it's again, blue, green, blue. And um, now let's go ahead to our levels, shift, active. We've got all that set up for all these lights. We did that very, very quickly. Record, we're gonna record over the aqua. And then let's give it a test. So turn on all my lights, click on aqua. And you can see we now have that aqua look, blue, green, blue, on every single one of my lights in order very, very quickly. So let's do, um, let's take this a little bit further. Let's do the same thing. Oops. 
So select my groups, intensity at full, add effects, color, two color. Let's do that red and yellow that we had earlier. Within groups, yes. Within groups. Stop. Okay. And then, yeah, I like that. We'll, we'll keep that the way it is. So let's go to levels, shift, active, record. So we're going to overwrite sunrise here. Great. Now, let's keep going. Rather than doing this all the way from the top, I'm just going to select red, green, and blue using my shift key. Remove attributes. And then let's make a few more. Let's make... Um, Let's see, instead of just red and yellow, let's do a, a red and white. Looks pretty cool. Let's make the red bigger. So we're going to make that the bigger number here. That looks cool. Okay. So again, levels, shift, active, record, red, white. All right. Let's keep at it. Let's remove all this uh, effects. Let's do, we haven't done blue in the middle, so let's do blue. And then let's do the outside's pink would be interesting. Let's put our spread back at 50%. Okay. View levels. Okay, and then this was what? Uh, pink, blue. Cool. All right, and then let's finally take this one step further while we're here. And um, again, we'll remove all this. And we can actually do the same effect that we have here, but with our groups that have our multiple colors going on. So instead of doing pink and blue, what if we do, um, let's see, let's do blue, green, uh, so aqua and then our sunrise look now it looks kind of boring right now as it is but if we turn our chase back on now it's crossfading between these two groups that have two different colors going on within them um, it's very smooth right now because the crossfades at 100 percent if we drop crossfade to zero now we have a very interesting looking chase with four different uh, uh, colors happening um, going across the spectrum. We can speed it up. And that's pretty cool. So we just made something very intense very quickly. Uh, and let's save that. So we hit record. And what else would you call this but sexy chase? Clear out, and now you can see I've got a playback with the sexy chase on there. Or if I want to go with a static look, look at my sunrise, aqua, red, white, pink, blue. Very, very quickly, all these different gradients or chases are very easy to use with the effects window. Color picker is good as well, but the effects window is really where this shines. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to leave comments below in our YouTube comment section. Uh, and I hope this has been helpful for you. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.